Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, do you know what comes to my mind when I think of fresh bread, steaming hot baked potatoes, tasty pan-fried breakfast eggs, luscious cakes and cookies... Well, I think of that delicious modern margarine, parquet margarine made by Kraft, because parquet margarine makes all those good-tasting foods taste even better. Yes, parquet's smooth, delicate flavor makes it grand for table use, makes it a real flavor shortening for baking mouth-watering cookies, cakes, and pastries. Yes, and parquet margarine is a delicious seasoning for hot vegetables, makes pan-fried foods tastier, too. That's why I think of parquet when all sorts of good foods come to mind. And another thing, whether you serve parquet margarine at the table or use it for cooking, you can be sure it's good for your family. It's made from selected American farm products that are wholesome and nourishing. What's more, parquet is a highly nourishing energy food, and every single pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So try economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, the delicious margarine made by Kraft. And now let's visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve. More hot cocoa, Judge Hooker? No thanks, Bertie. I'm warm enough. My, but a nice fire feels good on a cold night, doesn't it, Gildersleeve? How should I know? You've been blocking the heat in front of this fire all evening. If you're not careful, you'll give yourself a high hot foot. <laughs> but, gee, Uncle Mort, don't you think the fire is good for Judge Hooker's ideas? Uh, I don't know what you mean, Leroy. Well, you said they were just half-baked. Yes. <laughs> I don't recall. Young man, isn't it time for you to be in bed? Yeah, but you promised I could stay up as long as we had company. Well, that's right. Only I never thought the company... Uh... Uh, excuse me, Judge, I guess my foot's fallen asleep. Oh, you needn't hint, Gildersleeve, I'm going. Only it's been so cozy here, and the conversation's been so interesting. Conversation? Sounded more like a monologue to me. Don't they let you talk down in your courtroom, Judge? Poor man, he's just lonely and blue, that's all. Who's lonely and blue? Why, just because I like the family atmosphere around here, in preference to sitting in that big, cold, empty house of mine, does that mean I'm lonely and blue? Yes, Otherwise, you wouldn't come and stand in front of our fire and get all friendly in pink. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. You know what you need, Judge Hooker, is some good woman. No, no, I don't. I've tried a dozen housekeepers, but they all quit. Well, personally, I don't blame them, Judge. You're as crusty as a carload of peanut brittle. What do you mean, crusty? I'll have you know that I'm still considered one of Summerfield's most eligible bachelors. Yeah, eligible for what? Social Security? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, aren't you in bed yet? Oh, another hint. Bertie, my coat and hat, please. Yes, sir. Now, Judge, don't leave just because Leroy is going to bed. How about a game of old maid, a rummy? No, thanks, Gildy. You play a rummy like an old maid, an old maid like a rummy. <laughs> oh, a bad loser, eh? Here's your wraps, Judge. Now, be sure and bundle up well. Thank you. My, my, I don't blame the government for clamping down on the weather report. Uh, why, Bertie? Well, the less said about this weather, the better. I guess you're right. Well, good night, folks. Yeah. Good night, you little legal loophole. Now, don't be too harsh on him, Mr. Gillsleeve. Uh? The poor man is only hungering for companionship. Yes, and our food. Why, when he looks at you in this nice house with your nice niece and nephew and eating all the nice meals I fixed, he gets so green it looks like spring is here again. Yeah. You know, deep down, Bertie, I really like the little duffer. And when I spoke about him needing a good woman, I didn't mean a housekeeper. I meant a good wife. For some nice ladies that he might take two. It'd take two? That'd be big of me, Bertie. You're really only allowed one. Sam, are you going to marry off the judge? Well, I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched, but Leroy, I thought I told you to go to bed. You did, Uncle Mort, twice. Well, I'm not going to tell you again. Gee, that's swell, Uncle. It was getting sort of monotonous. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm going right now. Yeah. Well, up 
up at last, eh, Leroy? The only thing more difficult than getting you to bed at night is waking you in the morning. Ah, uh, good morning, Unc. Say, remember what you said last night about finding somebody to marry Judge Hooker? Oh, well, I, I didn't mean for you to hear that, young man. Well, it's lucky I did, because I've got somebody all lined up. Yep. What do you mean? Who? One of my teachers at school, Miss Cagle. Huh? Boy, the whole class has been trying to figure out a way to get rid of her ever since September. <laughs> They have? Yeah, well, they'd be glad when I tell them the judge is going to marry her. If, whoa, here, here, wait a minute, Leroy. First, what sort of a lady is this, Miss uh, Cagle? Well, to give you an idea, the kids elected her Miss Poison Puss of 1942. <laughs> Unanimous. If... Why, she's so... If, if she's anything at all like that, why nominate her for the title of Mrs. Hooker? Is that wrong? Well, after all, we're trying to make the judge's life brighter. Miss Cagle sounds like a drip of the first water. <laughs> Oh, gee, that's right. Uh, I was so anxious to get her off our hands, I didn't realize what a dirty trick it would be on the judge. Uh, yes. Well, we'll have to think of somebody else, I guess. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gilsley, but how about looking here in the morning paper? The morning paper? For what? For the bride. Maybe one of the persons in the personal will turn out to be the judge's dream girl. Well, thanks, Bertie. No harm in looking. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, oh, yes, here we are. Uh, personals. Attractive young lady, uh, blonde, wishes to meet sympathetic gentleman of means. Object, Hollywood. No, I don't think... I don't think that's the judge's style. Read the next one. That sounded better. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, here it is. A well-to-do widow interested in meeting professional man over 50. Have refined tastes and grand piano. Also, private income, own car, and seven delightful children who will add life to any home. Oh. <laughs> Gee, from seven kids. Yes, wrong number. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bertie. I'm afraid our little justice wouldn't have any peace if we snagged him a helpmate out of the help wanted. Oh, Jeepers, look at the time. i got to get over to Piggy Banks' house. Yeah? What for, Leroy? His Aunt Henrietta is knitting sweaters for the army, and I'm to bring her some wool Marjorie left for us. Well, run along by all means, then. So Henrietta Banks is in town. Say, Henrietta Banks. What's the matter with her? Nothing. She's perfect. Uh, for Judge Hooker, I mean. She has a nice social position. Her grandfather was the first white child born in this county. And... <laughs> And she's really not bad looking. Gee, I didn't know you knew Piggy's aunt, Uncle Mort. Yes, I met her about ten years ago. I remembered I'd just ripped my trousers before she came over, and I didn't dare get up all the time she was here. <laughs> it really was very embarrassing. She sure sounds like the future Miss Judge Hooker. Yeah, well, I'm going to try anyway. Now, let me have that yarn, Leroy. I'll deliver it. While I'm there, I can sort of subtly get around to talking about the judge and matrimony and... Things like that. I swear, I'll get your hat and coat on. Uh, well, what about that appointment you had to get examined for insurance, Mr. Gilsley? Oh, yes, the insurance doctor's due here in half an hour. Uh, you tell him I was called away on business, Bertie. Have him come in a day or so. If I'm <laughs> going to press the judge's suit, I better strike while the iron is hot. Hey, <laughs> Uncle Mort. Uh, thank you, Leroy. You know, I'm getting quite a kick out of this idea. <laughs> Won't the judge be surprised when he finds out all I'm doing for him? Well, here I go. Good luck, Mr. Gilsley. Happy hunting, Uncle. Uh, yes, well, thanks. Goodbye. Uh, he's a pretty swell guy, isn't he, Bertie? He sure is. Going to all that trouble just to make two lonely people happy. That's right. Look at him walking down the street. A regular Dan Cupid. Yes, sir. Hey, he got the figure for it. <laughs> Well, well, little Henrietta Banks. Why, you haven't changed a day since I saw you ten years ago. I haven't? Oh, you're just being nice. Huh? Oh, now, now, don't tell me. I, I know who you are. Uh, you're Mr., um... Oh, Mr. Gilder something. Yeah, that's right, Gilder Sleeve. Oh, yeah. yeah. But fancy you remembering me all this time. Well, won't you come in, Mr. Gilder Sleeve? Well, I don't mind if I do. My nephew, Leroy Forrest, was bringing over this yarn for you, and... He happened to mention your name, and I said, uh, well, never mind, you'd be surprised what I said. <laughs> well, have a chair, won't you? Uh, thank you. My, I, I can't imagine how you could remember me. Huh? After all, we only met once before, and you seemed so shy then. Uh, shy? Oh, yes, I remember. That was just a temporary bashfulness on my part. I suppose I was just afraid of making the wrong uh, impression. Oh, as if you could have. As if I couldn't have. 
Uh, but tell me, Miss Banks. Oh, or rather, uh, Henrietta. That is, if you don't mind. Oh, no, no. Not at all. Go right ahead. Well, when Leroy told me that you were here, I was greatly surprised to hear that you were still uh, Miss Banks. You were? Yes. My, but I'll bet you put up a gallant fight against all the men who must have wanted to change your name. Well, uh, some girls like a certain independence. Oh, uh, well, I knew that would be the trouble. That attitude of yours is hardly fair to us uh, poor men, Henrietta. Oh, do you think so, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Why, marriage is the most delightful of partnerships, uh, I'm told. And reminds me, uh, there's someone right here in this town who'd be just wonderful for you. Oh, really now? I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Now, Henrietta, you do too. I do not. Well, then I'll tell you. Oh, don't. So embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? If... <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to mention any names. But this fellow, well, he, uh, he's he been awfully lonesome. When I heard your name this morning, I... Uh, I mean, when he heard your name. Oh, yes, morning, yes, yes, I understand. Well, uh, I, that is, he is, I mean... We... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh? you haven't changed a bit. You're just as bashful and boyish as you were the first time I met you. Well, well I wasn't quite prepared. Uh, possibly I'd better come back another time. Yes, I think I should go now. Uh, you'll be hearing from me uh, later. I will. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, not goodbye. Au revoir, Henrietta. <laughs> Oh, hello, uh, Martha? Oh, Martha, you're acquainted with everyone in Summerfield. Well, tell me all you know about this uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, yeah. yes, that's the one. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. No. Well, what do you... No. 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 Oh, no. Well, lucky me. Of all the muddled up cases I've ever had to listen to in all my life... Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hi. Glad you dropped in. How's everything? Coming along better than you'd ever suspect, Judge. Remember our conversation out at the house the other night? Of course I do. And as soon as I left, I thought of some dandy answers, too. Now, let me see if I can remember. Oh, no, don't bother. But there's one thing I've been thinking about, Gildy, old man. Yeah? What was that, Judge? You remember saying that what I needed was a good woman? Yeah. I didn't give that much thought at first, but now I believe you're right. Oh, that's fine. And I have a little lady who'll be just the person for you. You think she'd know how to run my home right, huh? Oh, yes, and make you very happy, too. Hope she knows how to cook. Oh, yes, I'm sure she's a wonderful cook. Uh, very nice looking, also. Not interested in her looks, Gildy. At my age, a good cook is a lot more important than a pretty face. Oh, well, this lady is both. Um, I mean, she has both. Huh? That is, she is one and has the other. Oh. <laughs> uh, when would you like to meet her? Sooner the better. Well, how about dropping over to my house for dinner next Friday? I'll have her there, too. Fine. Only you needn't go to all this trouble. Couldn't you just meet me here and we could settle the whole thing in ten minutes? Yes. Oh, no, you can't do things that way. Why not? Well, how do you know you're going to like each other, Hooker? Huh? Uh, this is a serious step you're about to take. Huh. You've got to approach it uh, cautiously. Well, maybe you're right. Believe me, if she's all that you say she is, I'll keep her for life. Well, I should hope so. Oh, Judge, recess is over. All right, Billy. Well, I'll see you Friday night, Gildy. Hey, all right, Friday night. So long, Judge. Say, Your Honor, if you're still looking for a housekeeper... No, never mind, never mind. Mr. Gildersleeve has found a woman who sounds like a perfect servant. Well, that's nice of him. Yeah, he's a pretty good friend. In his fat, bumbling way. Ah, good afternoon, Bertie. Hello, Leroy. Hiya, good morning. Well, I've arranged the whole thing. Judge Hooker's coming to dinner day after tomorrow. Oh, then I better fix something extra special scrumptious with a touch of romantic and a dash of lovey-dovey. Yes. You invited Miss Banks, of course. Oh, yes. And she was so excited, she kept calling me a dear boy. <laughs> I sure hope she's going to like Judge Hooker when she meets up with him. Oh, of course she will. Just as soon as I tell her that he's the unknown admirer who's been sending her the flowers and candy and poems. 
Say, did I read you the new poem I sent her last night? No, let's hear it, Uncle. Yeah, I've got a copy of it here under the desk somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, here it is, under the water bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this, folks. Oh, Henrietta, sweet Henrietta, I can't forget a girl like you. <laughs> Wherever I go, I see your face in the sun and the snow or any old place. <laughs> Your smile turns the winter into spring and makes my poor heart go tingling-a-ling. <laughs> and though I'm so shy, I worship from afar. Way up in my sky, you're the number one star. <laughs> oh, Henrietta, sweet Henrietta, I'd sure like to get a girl like you. Oh, gee. Gee, I never knew you were a poet, Unc. You sure have a gift, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, do you like it? I'll give you copies if you want them. Well, that should sure make her feel mushy towards the judge. Yeah. Say, does he know he's been writing her all that guff and sending her all that stuff? Yes. Well, no, I've invited him to come here a half an hour before Henrietta gets here. They remind me to button hook her and tell him all about it then. Yes, sir, that's a very good idea. Yeah. And he won't have time enough then to get cold feet. Yeah. And cold feet is ruined more romances one way or the other than practically anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything set, Bertie? Yes, sir, right to a T. All the judge's favorite dishes to put him in good humor. You know, I planned to decorate the table with orange blossoms so Miss Banks would feel like a blushing bride when I couldn't get none. So I used oranges, so we was out. And that's why we got lemons on the table. Yes, sir. <laughs> that must be the bridegroom-to-be now. Let him in, Bertie. Yes, sir. And won't he be surprised to learn of what we just cooked up for him? Yeah. Leroy, leave those olives alone. Yes, sir, I was just rearranging them, that's all. Really? It ain't the judge, Mr. Gillsleeve, it's the insurance company. They'd have sent another doctor to give you that examination. Oh, my goodness, I can't make it now. Tell him I'm busy. Have him come here another time. Okay, okay, but you better hurry before the rates go up. The rates. Gee, of all the times to show up just when we're ready to put over a big merger like this. Leroy, I wish you'd include yourself out of this affair. It's a delicate matter involving the future happiness of two fine people. And I don't want you in your juvenile way to mess it up. Oh, don't worry, Uncle Mort. I know my part. As soon as they go in the living room after dinner, I'll start playing those Nelson Eddy, Jeanette McDonald records. Well, you're a bright boy, Leroy. That's right. Don't slip up now. The doctor done went, but he's been replaced by another visitor, Miss Henrietta Banks. What? Oh, she's too early, Bertie. Why, the judge isn't here yet. Of all the numbskull females that ever are, hello, Henrietta. <laughs> My, how lovely you look tonight. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. Yeah? And dear little Leroy, how are you this evening? Oh, just fine, Miss Banks. Oh, come, come, come now. No more of this Miss Banks, darling. Just call me Andy. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, how are you, Throckmorton? The cat still got your tongue? Uh, who, me? Oh, no. <laughs> we don't keep a tongue. I mean, nobody's got our cat. <laughs> Uh, won't you have a, a sit down? Thank you. Now, come over here and sit beside me. Huh? There. Uh, That's better, isn't it? Oh, yes, considerably. You know, I was so anxious to find out what your surprise was, I, I just couldn't wait. Uh -oh. That's why I'm here so early. Do you think I'm acting like a giddy young schoolgirl? Yes. Oh, Throckmorton, you say the most flattering, precious things. <laughs> Almost as nice as your poems. Yes. Yeah. My poems? But I never wrote you any poems. Oh, come, come now, don't deny them, you shy, modest boy. But there must be some mistake. Why, not at all. Oh, uh, incidentally, Throckmorton... Uh, do you particularly like the color of those drapes at the window? Well, I don't know. I never gave it much thought. Why? Oh, I was just thinking about changing them, that's all. Oh, uh, if you mean... Uh, uh, yes. That's what I thought you meant. <laughs> uh, uh, Morton, am I going to get that big surprise before dinner or afterward? Well, Henrietta, looks like you're going to get it any minute now. <laughs> but there's an important phone call for you. Phone call? Oh, my goodness. Excuse me, please. I'll be right back. Uh, hello? Who is this? Hello, guilty old chap. This is Hooker. Sorry I won't be able to make it tonight. If what? 
I got a hung jury that ought to be. If... <laughs> You've got to be here, Judge Hooker. You don't understand all the trouble I've gone to. There's surprises and everything. How soon can you get here? Maybe I can install things. Oh, don't count on me at all. What am I going to do about Henrietta? Uh, Miss Banks. Oh, you mean the new housekeeper? Housekeeper? Just tell her she's hired. Hired? Yeah, I'll take a chance. What can I do? Uh, but she isn't a housekeeper at all. Then tell her she's fired. Goodbye, get asleep. Well, now I'm really in soup. Oh, Scott Martin. Is the surprise ready now? Uh, yes, Henrietta, but it's a different one altogether. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I didn't think you would. I asked Judge Hooker to come here this evening. I told the judge all about you. But he can't make it tonight. Oh, well, that's perfectly all right, Jock Morton. What? It is? Uh, surely. Oh, you don't know what a relief this is to me, Henrietta. Why, you impetuous boy. Don't you realize that even if the judge had come, we... We couldn't get married without a license? If... If we? If the judge wasn't going to marry us. He was going to marry you. Uh, to whom? To himself. But I... I don't know him at all. Oh, yes, you do. He's your unknown admirer. Oh, no, that, uh, that's you. Oh, no, that's the judge. All right, then, then bring him here and let's see. Uh, see? Oh, well, I can hardly do that for a little while yet. Oh, you're just like all other men. Uh, After leading me on, it turns out to be a joke. Uh, a cruel, heartless joke. And after I've told all my friends. Oh. Well, you haven't heard the last of this, Mr. Gildersleeve. There are courts and laws to protect innocent girls from men like you. Goodbye. Oh, why was I ever born? <laughs> I'm telling you, Judge, Leroy got it straight from the little Banks boy. His aunt has called in some lawyer named Taylor. Oh, he's a tough man, this Taylor. He'll take you straight to the cleaners. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. They've been going over those letters and poems that I sent Henrietta. Uh-oh, that's bad. Yes. If they ever read those poems in court, I'll never be able to hold up my head again in Summerfield. That serves you right for trying to marry me off. Gildersleeve, you're a pretty stupid Cuban. If... <laughs> But I meant everything for the best, Judge. Oh, please, can't you help me? Why, yes, Gildersleeve, I'll be glad to help you. If you publish those poems, put me down for a copy. Mm, I'll see here, Hooker. That's the wrong attitude after I played John Alden to your Pocahontas. Gildersleeve, I'm going to get out of here before I get involved in this scandalous case. Goodbye. I'll be seeing you in the funny paper, Gildy. Uh, the old goat. There's gratitude for you. The next time I take pity on him, I hope somebody gives me a good swift kick in the telephone. <laughs> Hello? If who? Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Taylor. Oh, uh, uh, if tomorrow, Mr. Taylor. If what time, Mr. Taylor? Uh, goodbye, Mr. Taylor. Oh, now my goose is frigazied. <laughs> if Bertie, Leroy. What is it, huh? Did you call Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, more bad news. Henrietta Banks is sending her lawyer over to see me tomorrow afternoon. She's going to sue me for damages if I don't marry her. Oh, gee, if you could only show her that you'd make a terrible husband. It's nonsense, Leroy. I'd make a wonderful husband. What am I saying? I'd be awful. <laughs> yeah, but how are you going to prove it without marrying her? Uh, huh? Wait a minute. I just had an idea. Yes, I think it'd work out. If I could only convince that lawyer of hers that I'm not worth marrying... But how? I know. Now listen, you two. When Mr. Taylor, the lawyer, shows up tomorrow, Bertie, you'll meet him at the door, and then you'll say to him... Come right in, mister. You can see Mr. Gillsleeve, but you got to promise to be quiet while you're in there. On account of he's a mighty sick man. Oh, uh, sick? Must be something new. Oh, no, he gets this way off and on. Now, here we is, and remember, no getting him excited and no yelling at him. Oh, of, of course not. I brought you a visitor, the gentleman you was expecting. Oh, yes. <laughs> How do you do, sir? You won't mind if my nephew just goes on feeding me my chicken broth, will you? No, not at all. Uh, maybe I'd better come some other day when you'll be feeling better. Hmm? Oh, sometimes I wonder if I'll ever feel better. No, no. No, no, don't say that. Don't you still have a fighting chance? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, my boy. You're such a comfort. Even more chicken broth, please. Okay, Uncle. Careful, it's hot. Yes, I'll be careful. 
Oh! <laughs> hey, that is hot, Leroy. Uh, careful, Uncle. Uh, careful? Oh, yes. Oh, the pain. <laughs> <laughs> no more soup, Leroy. Well, uh, what seems to be your trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I could tell you about my troubles all afternoon. But why bore you with an organ recital? Yes, sir. That man is in no shape to get married. And any lady who gets hitched up with him better be ready to dye her wedding veil black. No. No, Bertie, never say die. Uncle Mort still has a 50-50 chance. Is that so? Do you want to bet? Oh. <laughs> Do you want to finish dictating your will, Uncle? Uh, excuse me for interrupting, Mr. Gildersleeve, but uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, my heart. Oh, high blood pressure? Alternating with low blood pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Rather unusual. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Yes, anything else. Uncle has been given up by ten doctors, six hospitals, and a chiropractor. <laughs> yeah, so you can see, I'm, I'm really in no condition to take on new obligations. Well, I should think not. Yeah. I uh, don't see any reason for me to waste any time examining you. I'll just go back and report. Yeah. Oh. oh, excuse me. Uh, hand me the telephone, Leroy. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Gildersleeve. This is Judge Hooker. Say, heard the good news yet? It's all over the courthouse. Congratulations, you lucky stiff. Uh, I don't think I understand. Why, you know what's happened? Henrietta Banks has gone and eloped with her lawyer, George Taylor. Uh, what? Yeah, well, so long. Well, wow, this is wonderful. All my troubles are over. Now she can't sue me. Henrietta married her lawyer, folks. Say, if she... Then who are you, mister? Uh, me? Oh, I thought you knew. I'm the doctor from the insurance company. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't make the grade, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Oh! <laughs> The Great Gilder Slave will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, I want to answer some questions. Several people have asked me lately questions like, What's parquet margarine made of? Is it good for you? How can it taste so deliciously good? Well, I'm glad to answer those questions because it will explain why parquet margarine is so different and better than old-time margarines. Why it's a downright delicious food that's nourishing and wholesome, too. You see, parquet is a modern vegetable margarine made by Kraft, and the pure, refined American vegetable oils that go into parquet help make it the highly nutritious energy food that it is. And to its wholesome goodness, Kraft adds important vitamin A to parquet margarine, 9,000 units to every pound. Now, about parquet margarine's delicious flavor, it's Kraft's long experience in making good-tasting foods that accounts for that. Yes, if you think all margarines are alike, just taste parquet. That rich, delicate parquet flavor is making it a favorite everywhere for table use and for cooking, too. But why not find out about parquet margarine's goodness yourself? Yes, try a pound or two of economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Just ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. The delicious modern margarine made by Kraft, the makers of famous Miracle Whip salad dressing. been turned down, what are you going to do about insurance? Leroy, I'm going to spend that money for some victory insurance. What do you mean? I'm going to invest in defense bonds that'll pay off in ten years. It's like an endowment policy. Well, and meanwhile, your dollars will be fighting for you and for Uncle Sam. That's right. It's a wonderful way of combining business and pleasure, isn't it? Good night, folks. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.